We've talked about procedures and equipment, so now it's time to dive into exposure monitoring. This is where we really start connecting the dots, using what we've learned to figure out who's being exposed to what and how much of it they're getting exposed to. Exposure limits are the guidelines that tell us how much of a substance is considered safe to be around. There are a few different types of limits you'll hear about. PEL stands for Permissible Exposure Limit. This is the maximum amount of a substance that OSHA says workers can be exposed to over an eight hour workday. TLV is the threshold limit value, which is set by the American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygienists, or the ACGIH. It's similar to the PEL, but sometimes it's a bit stricter. STEL stands for Short Term Exposure Limit. This is the maximum amount you can be exposed to for a short period, usually about 15 minutes, without experiencing any ill effects. Knowing these limits is key because they help us determine when we need to take action. If your monitoring shows that exposure levels are above these limits, it's time to step in and make changes to protect everyone's health. Now, before we can monitor exposure, we need to know what we're dealing with. The first step in identifying hazardous substances is to take a good look at the materials and processes in your workplace. What chemicals are being used? Are there any byproducts or residues? What about dust or fumes? Once you've got a list, you can start looking up the exposure limits for each one and decide how you're gonna monitor them. Once you've got your samples, the next step is to interpret the data. This is where you compare your measurements to the exposure limits we talked about earlier, PEL, TLV, and STEL. If your data shows that exposure levels are below the limits, that's great news. It means the workplace is generally safe. But if the levels are above the limits, it's time to take action. That could mean improving ventilation, using different materials, or even changing the way certain tasks are performed. Interpreting data also means looking for trends. Are exposure levels consistently high at certain times of day or in specific areas? Are some workers more exposed than others? Understanding these patterns can help you make more informed decisions about how to protect your team. Now, let's talk about the different types of sampling you can do, specifically real-time versus integrated sampling. Each has its own pros and cons, so it's important to know when to use each one. Real-time sampling is exactly what it sounds like. You get instant readings on exposure levels as they happen. The big advantage here is that you can take immediate action if something's wrong. For example, if a gas detector goes off, you know right away that you need to evacuate or fix the problem. On the flip side, we have integrated sampling. This is where you collect samples over a longer period, say over the course of a workday, and then analyze them later on. The advantage here is that it gives you a more comprehensive view of exposure, which can be really important for understanding overall risk. The downside, you don't get instant feedback, so if there's a problem, you might not find out until after the fact. In many cases, you might end up using both methods together. Real-time sampling can help you catch immediate problems, while integrated sampling gives you the information that you need to make strategic decisions about overall workplace safety. 